one has to set a little bit apart the different types of pulmonary hypertension. So there is this so-called idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, which is more or less a rare disease. And then we have the pulmonary hypertension linked to lung diseases, to heart diseases, to various infectious diseases, to high altitude. So overall, worldwide, we have more than 100 million people suffering from pulmonary hypertension. So as to those being induced or caused by lung disease or heart disease, of course, prevention would mean to prevent the underlying disease or may even be better treatment of HIV, which we do in these days, or schistosomiasis, which is also a trigger of pulmonary hypertension. There, it's a clear story to go for prevention, to meaning to treat the underlying disease. In the idiopathic form of pulmonary hypertension, a prevention is currently not in our hands. Theoretically, it could be in those patients where we know they are mutation carriers and maybe down the road gene editing will become available. But in these days, in these patients, we have to take care to achieve early diagnosis. All the starting points of the therapies we currently have start by the concept to induce vasodilation. Meanwhile, we know that part of them do more than to vasodilate the abnormal vessels, that they also have impact on the structural remodeling, the inward remodeling, which means the thickened walls, which narrow the lumen and uh, which represent the major problem. We have to find the right way to reverse this remodeling. And we know it can be done. So with this first approach, Known to be successful in a number of patients, but having serious side effects, this was the use of imatinib, which we started to use more than 10 years ago and brought to a clinical trial, which was in essence successful, but the drug is not approved to, due to the side effects we came across. We know we can reverse this pulmonary hypertension. We can reverse this, this thick-walled abnormalities which we have in the lung, in the lung vessels. And this has to be the goal. Many things will change dramatically over the next 10, 20 years. Just uh, to give uh, one example, our group now found the first mechanism to regrow alveoli in mice with lung emphysema. Growing alveoli, so the parenchymal structures, is something what we do around birth and even after birth. So we have the program and we have to find out how this program works and why this program stops to work at some time of, uh, uh, of age development and how we can wake it up again. If this were possible, this would be a dramatic, a dramatic change in this huge field of lung emphysema.